Euro Gold is driven by being the best civil engineering contractor in the Northwest, ensuring its clients are given the highest level of service that they deserve. Euro Gold work in a wide range of industry sectors, including house building, highways, commercial and industrial build. La Vita is an award-winning, independently run Italian restaurant. Located on Rose Lane in the heart of Liverpool, real Italian style dishes, using the best ingredients, skillfully prepared by our chefs. Come and try our serious Italian experience. Mulligan's Funeral and Monumental Services are a family-owned funeral service, first established by the late Brian Mulligan in 1996. We provide funeral homes in Gorton, Manchester and Reddish, Stockport, and we pride ourselves on giving a friendly and professional service to all the families who use our service. Contact us on 0161 432 0809. Hello everyone and welcome to the show. This week we'll be meeting Patricia Gohan from Trinity Hampers in Luton. We'll be celebrating with the Lollavita restaurant in Liverpool. But first up we're off to meet Kevin Craig who is the founder and CEO of PLMR. The company was founded in 2006 and since then it has become the UK's top 100 and the world's top 250 communications firm. Kevin has also taken part in many fundraising events to help charities and good causes. And he's got great Irish heritage. So Kevin, tell me a little bit about your company PLMR. Well, it's a communications business, a public relations business. Uh, founded 15 years ago. We do public relations, we make websites, we make films, we do uh, political campaigns for all sorts of clients. Um, Gumtree, one of the most visited websites in Britain, many British universities and a whole host of charities and other companies. And of course you appear on TV a lot. Well, Kevin Craig is a crisis management expert and managing director of the public relations company PLMR. He joins us from our central London studio. Kevin Craig, CEO of PLMR, that's political lobbying and media relations. A very warm welcome to all of you. Let me introduce today's guests at the round table. We have Kevin Craig, Labour councillor for Lambeth Council in London. Kevin, what's, what's the problem with this? Time to take a look through today's papers with Michelle and Kevin. And from central London, and we've got Kevin Craig, who's one of them, the lead, UK's leading public relations and crisis managing experts. Well, the public relations and crisis management expert, Kevin Craig, joins us now. Good afternoon to you, uh, Kevin Craig. Uh, Kevin Craig is managing director of PLMR, which deals in public relations and crisis management. Kevin, thanks for joining me. For some years now, uh, our company and myself and other leading colleagues, we get asked on to... TV in the UK and across the world to talk about the things that we're expert in. So that might be politics, it could be the media, it could be reputation and it's, um, it's a great opportunity for myself and the business and I'm, I'm very grateful to have it and we try to have fun doing it. I'm coming to the end of nine and seven, 18 years as a, a councillor in the London Borough of Lambeth next year. I also stood unsuccessfully for Parliament uh, back in 2005 and I guess my interest and love of politics started just from where I grew up with mum from Galway, with dad from Donegal on a council estate in South London and I was very aware from a young age of how important good public services were and also how important it was for people to be treated fairly at work. In my experience so many people in the Irish community in this country 
benefited from strong trade unions and benefited from good rights in the workplace. And that's where my interest in politics developed as I went off to university. Where everyone can go about their business, you know, in freedom and without fear of discrimination. Well, my mum very sadly died of, of cancer aged 69 in 2012 in Trinity Hospice in London where she received at the end of her life amazing care and my sister Louise, who now lives in Dublin, um, we were very moved and grateful uh, by and for the care that mum received and so as a result, after she passed away, um, we uh, made a lot of um, effort to raise money and raise donations um, in her memory and that culminated with Trinity Hospice, the oldest, oldest hospice in England, uh, naming a room in her memory and uh, we're very proud of that. We continue to support Trinity and there's a whole gang of people from London and Galway heading to a very big fundraiser in a few weeks time in London. We take comfort from it like a lot of viewers of the programme who've lost people in their lives, it's, it's a very difficult process to go through and um, the work that we did for Trinity, that we'll carry on doing for Trinity, um, is not just for mum, it's for her sisters who also passed away there, Kathleen, Maureen, and for all those people, Irish, London, West Indian, who have uh, gone through those doors from all around the world who get wonderful end of life care. And, and, and we love it and it makes us feel good and it's something good that's come out of, out of sadness. Now, like I said earlier on, you've put your heart and soul into fundraising for all good causes. Tell me about carrying the Olympic torch across London. It's quite overwhelming, actually. There seems to be hundreds of thousands of people out, and I've never experienced anything like it. It's hugely humbling and amazing and wonderful. Well, that, carrying the Olympic torch across London was a very special day. Um, for a number of reasons. I was asked to do it because I'd supported uh, as a successful business person a charity some friends set up to, to uh, uh, bring artificial limbs to children in Africa who didn't have access to the NHS and the support we get in this country, the wonderful um, uh, Hope family, Bacon family they were. They asked me to carry the torch, I didn't know about it, it was an incredible honour. I'm running from Ludgate Hill up to St Paul's Cathedral so uh, quite an amazing leg to run and I'm hugely excited about it, very honoured. And it's wonderful that so many people have come out, I'm so excited. To carry the Olympic torch up the steps of St Paul's Cathedral the day before the Olympics started in London 2012, there were hundreds of millions watching at that moment, it was a huge honour, but it was also particularly meaningful for me because the day that it happened was the last day that my mum was able to be out and about in London uh, before she finally um, uh, went back into the hospice before she passed away. So I am ever grateful for that, that memory. It was a huge honour and I, I feel very privileged. I got involved with the um, family um, of a young girl because the family are great friends of mine. Her name was Pollyanna and she was in a terrible accident in London where a bus crashed into her and her mum and her grand grandmother. The grandmother passed away and Pollyanna lost um, one of her legs below the knee. She's the daughter of a very special couple, great friends of mine, and I wanted to help them. So we helped set up a charity called Elizabeth's Legacy of Hope, which brings prosthetics and support to children across the world, and it tries to bring support of the same amazing level that you get in the UK and the amazing NHS, which of course many Irish people have and do benefit from. So I wanted to do something to help, because for me, like many other Irish people and people of Irish descent, it isn't just about being commercially successful, it's about maximising the impact of what you do on the way. Of course, that's wonderful work that you've done there, Kevin, and it's been, you've been so supportive. But I know that you've supported the homeless in uh, Camden as well. That's right, Martin, and we supported the homeless in Camden, um, and it was all around the work of the Irish Centre there, because when uh, my dad, Seamus, who was from Ardra in County Donegal, uh, he passed away last November in Letterkenny. I was, I was there with him at the end. A great man, he worked most of his life in England. Um, and when he passed away, we, it was during the time of COVID, we couldn't have a normal funeral uh, with all the things that go with it. So instead of um, flowers and stuff like that, we 
raised money to support homeless Irish people in London and raised uh, a sum of several thousand pounds, I think it was, for the, the Irish Centre in memory of Dad, because again, he would have liked that, you know, and I am very conscious, um, and I see it a lot on, on your channel, there are many second generation Irish people whose success and opportunities come off the back of decades of sacrifice and labour, whether it's on building sites, as dinner ladies in schools, or doing the jobs that many English people at the time didn't want to do, and we stand on the shoulders of that generation, and that's why when Dad passed away, raising that money was a fitting tribute to him. Now, I was so sorry to hear about your dad passing away last year. Uh, of course, it's always very sad when our parents leave us. But of course, you were very close to your dad. And I know that you dedicated a lot of your time uh, before your dad died. Tell me a little bit about the lead up to that and how, how you were so close to your dad. Well, I think my story uh, of um, the last couple of years of my dad, Seamus's life, is probably a story that's very typical of your viewers, which is my family and I, we're based here in London. Uh, Dad uh, chose to go back home to Donegal. He loved Donegal. He loved where he came from. It was always his ambition, even before he got sick after a stroke. And so for the last few years of his life, as his health declined, um, I would be over there many times a year uh, to um, often with my children and my partner to see him, uh, take him out, see how he's doing, uh, let him know we hadn't forgotten, forgotten about him. Um, and it was great. And, and even though we're sad that he's passed away, I think like a lot of other people, we have great memories from that last part of his life, uh, which I will ch cherish forever. And I'm very proud of the uh, relationship that I had with my father. Um, and I, was, I feel very lucky. I can tell by the way you're speaking, Kevin, that Ireland means a lot to you. And Irish people yeah. uh, means a lot to you. Well, Ireland and Irish people, Irish culture means a huge amount to me. It has done my whole life. I've been very conscious that I obviously stand here talking to you sounding very London and very English. But, you know, my family's story is many, many generations of, of Irish people, of their stories, of their struggle. And it means a lot. And, you know, you look at my kids' names, Nuala and Tully, two girls, you know, we, we wanted them to, to understand where they came from and we wanted them to understand the story of the Irish in Britain because it's, it's, it's context to everything else that's happened. Kevin Craig is a very inspirational guy who's helped us set up this charity. We help thousands of amputees abroad because Pollyanna gets wonderfully made legs in this country and we feel very sad. There are thousands of children that don't get all the help that Pollyanna has. It's the amazing Hope family, Elizabeth's legacy of Hope, and I'm hugely humbled that they chose me. Congratulations, Kevin, on the huge success of your company, and we wish you the very best of luck in the future. Now, we're going to take a little break, and we'll see you very soon. Eurogold is driven by being the best civil engineering contractor in the Northwest, ensuring its clients are given the highest level of service that they deserve. Eurogold work in a wide range of industry sectors, including house building, highways, commercial and industrial build. Lollavita is an award-winning, independently run Italian restaurant. Located on Rose Lane in the heart of Liverpool, real Italian-style dishes using the best ingredients, skillfully prepared by our chefs. Come and try our serious Italian experience. Mulligan's Funeral and Monumental Services are a family-owned funeral service, first established by the late Brian Mulligan in 1996. We provide funeral homes in Gorton, Manchester and Redditch, Stockport, and we pride ourselves on giving a friendly and professional service to all the families who use our service. 
contact us on 0161 432-0809. Welcome back. Now the Lollavita restaurant in Liverpool has been recognised on many occasions for the lovely food they serve and the wonderful warm and friendly feeling that awaits you. Well recently we went along to the Lifestyle Awards at the Liner Hotel in Liverpool and this turned out to be a very successful evening for the Lollavita restaurant. Shona, many congratulations. Two awards tonight for the Lullavita restaurant. Oh, thanks so much. You know, it's been a tough year for you, hasn't it? But you know, tonight has made up for it all. 100% it's been a tough year, but tonight we've enjoyed it. Even if we didn't come and win, we knew our team was the best. We always like to make our customers feel welcome. It's like they're coming into their own dining room, eating a meal, going home, not worrying about washing the dishes. It's, it's just so nice. It's great to get that party feeling back again at the Lollavita, isn't it, after been 12 months of, of lockdown? Yeah, we love it. We love our customers. We just love the atmosphere. Kevin, now I know, look, at everything is very difficult at the moment, but you guys have worked so hard to make the Lollavita uh, successful. Yeah, we have all worked hard. And, um Thanks for everyone that's voted. And of course your food is absolutely fantastic. Yeah, I blame myself for that. <laughs> well, you do a wonderful job behind the scenes uh, getting that food out. And all the staff as well. I'll, I'll thank, for, thank them as well. So. Oh yeah, I'm really proud of them. It's been a tough year for everyone, but they've worked really hard. And I know that you've had some great nights up there at the Lollavita pre-COVID. Yeah, we used to go have little parties there every now and then, but we go there every week for like a family dinner. We try and make an effort to go every single Thursday with the kids, mum and dad, me and Claire, just so we get to see Shauna as well because um, they both work that hard, they're in work like six, seven days a week. We just don't get much time to spend with her. It's been a hard year for all companies and all business, but Eurogold, you've had a lockdown going on for quite a while, obviously, but Eurogold is back up and running now and, and things are starting to pick up again for you. Yeah, we were quite lucky, Martin, to be honest. Um, so construction didn't really stop. We had a couple of weeks where the sites kind of came to a bit of a halt, but then after that we were pretty much back up and running. Um, but the, you know, the, for next year especially, there's a lot going on for Eurogold, um, and you know it's it's going to be a good year next year definitely. It is a fantastic night, isn't it? I'm really proud. I think people just want to get out and party again. You know, we've had, uh, you know, lockdown for, well, you know, 18 months. People have been struggling. I mean, so many people have said it's the first night they've gone out properly in 18 months. So, yeah, let's do it in style. It'd be great to see so many people that's been in lockdown and their business is closed back up here celebrating. Yeah, well, that's, I think it's going to give people a lot of confidence as well that, you know, we're back. I mean, myself as well, my business suffered and, you know, flatlined for 15 months. So it's a comeback for me as well. So I'm feeling the same as everybody else in the room. Eurogold has been a great supporter, of course, of the TV show, but you employ so many people and you give so many, you know, work around the area. Yeah, well, that's, definitely, that's it, Martin. It's about... One of the things is, is trying to keep everyone, which we've managed to do, we've managed to keep as many people as we can in employment um, since the very first lockdown. 
Um, you know, even though the, like the sites are back up and running, the office wasn't, and we've got 40 plus people in the office. So you know, we had to try and make sure that they were, you know, they were kept okay. They were on furlough. We tried to bring as many people back as we could. Um, and you know, and we've been, you know, we've we've come through it. A lot of companies, unfortunately, haven't been able to come through it. But we've we've got there. But that's because we've got a strong team, strong order book, and we're very good at what we do as well. We're missing your mum and dad here tonight, and the party doesn't seem the same when they're not here. Yeah, I know, Martin. I totally agree. However, me and Rob wouldn't have been able to be here because they've got the children tonight as well. <laughs> yeah. oh, so you, you've pulled the bonus ball. Yeah, they've sacrificed tonight to mind the kids. There's people here I've not seen for two years, so it's lovely. And, and it's all about boosting confidence and reminding people that why they're in business and to keep going, especially, you know, it's a, it's a fantastic night. There's no diet tonight. There's no, it's, like, it's off the scale, you know, it's just like, come on, just enjoy yourself, eat cake, let them eat cake. <laughs> you all put your heart and soul into the company. Everybody seems to be together. Yeah, well definitely, it's a family run business, but even people who aren't like the family are part of the family. There's a lot of people who've worked for Eurogold for many, many years, and that tells the story itself. We give the charities regional local charities the money direct wow the prices are amazing aren't they some great holidays uh, you know iceland and staying in a castle i mean absolutely gorgeous these are unusual things but people have got to dig deep because they, they you know we're raising money for grassroots charities for people who you know who need the money so you know like um it's we're not giving it to charities where they're paying salaries and big corporations these are people in the community who are just out there raising money for good causes themselves We've, we've shut the restaurant for the weekend so they can enjoy tonight and not worry about opening the restaurant tomorrow with a sore head. It's back to work on Monday, Kevin, but of course, look at the restaurant now is open. Is it seven days a week? Yes, and we've got a uh, Christmas menu from the 24th to the 23rd of December as well. So for people to book the Lollavita, how can they do that, Shona? You can do it by a phone um, or by our, our website. We're all delighted for Shona, Kevin and all the staff. There's always a lovely warm atmosphere at the Lollavita restaurant and it's great to see them going from strength to strength. Now, about 18 months ago, Patricia Gohan lost her job due to COVID-19. Then she started her own business called Trinity Hampers. Since then, Patricia has sent hampers all over the UK. And recently we caught up with her to see how things are going for her now. Well, unfortunately, during COVID-19, I was made redundant and couldn't really decide what I was going to do. I was looking for a job. And then I thought, why not try something completely new? So I got involved in Trinity Hampers. And that's how it kind of all started. And then um, earlier this year, I finally got a new job. So I thought I'll work them both side by side. So it, it's more, becoming more of a seasonal thing rather than a whole year thing. So like St. Patrick's Day, Mother's Day, and obviously now Christmas coming up. I get calls from all over the place, mainly in the UK, all over, but I've just had somebody message me yesterday to see if I'd send to America. Um, I've sent a couple to Canada. So yeah, so they, they get the names out there kind of things. Well, you can have like um, nice the Flanagan por porridge oats, traditional bracks, um, the nice Irish Cadbury's chocolate, Parry Barry's tea, Kimberley biscuits. I've got lovely shortbread shamrock biscuits, club orange, those, everything that's traditionally Irish. Everything I put in the hamper is made in Ireland, um, except one of my chocolate bars, which I don't know if anybody, people that know apparently a catch bar, they're bought in Ireland, but they're actually made in the West Indies. And outside of the West Indies, the only place you can get it is in Ireland. I normally ask people for a budget, which is the easiest way to do it. And then, tell, then they give me a list of what they want, and that's how it works. If 
you like the smell of turf, which I do, it's just it's just like your, your mother's kitchen or your grandmother's kitchen. It's a little a little cottage and it has a small little piece of original turf. You light it and the, the smoke comes out the chimney and it smells divine. But you have to light the turf because it is quite strong. Now Christmas just around the corner, Patricia. How much of a lead in time do you need to get hampers if people want to order them? Uh, to get them packed and delivered and out there to the public? Well, people that know me, I'm quite lastminute.com, so I do appreciate that there's other people like me out there. So I can be posting up as far as, if you're getting it in the post, I'd need probably at least the week before Christmas in England. Um, but two weeks to guarantee that you'll get it there in time. But if you're collecting from me, then we can negotiate. If you want to come to, to Luton and pick it up for me personally, then you know, we can do a little bit of lastminute.com. So if people want to order a hamper, let's say for their mum, and their mum is in a different part of the country to where they are, you would deliver the hamper to their mum? Yes, I'd either deliver it personally if it's within kind of a 20 mile radius of Luton, otherwise i put it in the post. And I'll add any personal message, whatever the message you want to put in the hamper from yourself, I'll put that in there for you. If you would like to order one of Patricia's hampers for Christmas, well get in touch with Trinity Hampers on Facebook. Well that brings us to the end of the show for this week. We hope you've enjoyed it. Henry McGlade is back with us next Thursday evening at 7 o'clock with his show from County Mayo. And we are here, as usual, 7.30 with the Irish in the UK. Until then, take good care and thank you for watching.